How are you doing, my man? I'm all right. Good to you, pal. He's right, all right. You know, he's an handful. He's the hardest fight I've ever had. <laughs> How's Tommy? Do you know what? I, it, obviously, I speak to him quite a bit, even though he, he trains down at Glens and not, real, uh, not up at mine. But I speak to him on a very regular basis. Uh, he comes up every now and again and stuff. He's lucky, best he's ever looked. Yeah. I think he told me this morning he woke up at something like. He woke up like a pound and a half under. Yeah. He had his breakfast. He was having steak last night. He's just. I don't know if he was that much under. Whatever he said he was, but he was on it. And he, um, I think he's just, he's really coming of age. Yeah. He's maturing into the way. He's maturing into the way. He's maturing as a fighter. He's maturing as a man. Um, and he's just going to get better and better. Then, what about Kane Salvin? How's he doing? Kane's doing alright. Listen, Kane, Kane's, Kane's one of them kids. He hasn't, and he does not mind me saying, and Glenn will not mind me saying, he's not shown a smidgen in his last, in his first three fights of what, what Kane's got about him. He's such an handful when he lets his hands go. In the gym, sparring, he's nasty, he's vicious, and that's what you need in sparring in, in, a, in a fighter. Uh, he trains hard, he lives the right life, he doesn't go out, he doesn't drink or anything like that, but it's just, I don't know what it is, it's, you've got to get him right in a fight. When he starts letting his hands go in the boxes, I guarantee you the kid's, the kid's got something. It's just, it's just maybe just getting used to the pro games a little bit. I'm not too sure, but he's not showing what he should be showing yet, but I'm very confident he will. Yeah. Moving on from that, John, what are you doing in your, in your own time now? Are you still training fighters at Yeah, we, we're flying at the minute. We've got, we're flying at the minute. Yeah, uh, uh, Dennis Hobson, Jim McGleadless, we are with Titans Boxing. Uh, Titans Boxing, we've got his own amateur club, own professional. Well, it's amateur, um, that's it, where are we? Titans Boxing. Um, you didn't have to zoom in for that then. <laughs> um, and we've got, we've, we've registered this season 15 amateur boxers. And uh, when we first started two years ago, well, just two and a half years ago, we didn't have a single boxer in the gym. Not one single boxer, amateur professional. We've now got, uh, we've got 15 amateurs, and we've got one pro at the minute, stuff in our medal, we've got boxing on Friday, tomorrow night. But we've got, we've got three or four, what are on the verge, you need another 12 months, no rushing them, you need another 12 months and they will be 100% ready to turn professional. So I'm hoping the next, we'll be studying this time, 12 months time, we'll have three or four of his own homegrown talent on the professional course. Brilliant, so all together, so basically you've got a full gym now then. Oh, we rammed, mate. All your randoms coming in as well. Yeah, exactly, there's fitness classes and things like that. Uh, so if any any boxing fans just want to keep fit, it's not just boxers, they keep fit, these kids classes all sorts. But uh, we're absolutely flying at a minute. Um, um, apparently, I haven't been told anything. Not been told anything. So yeah, um, apparently, the last I spoke to him, everything was fine. Uh, it was just he weren't in the gym, he weren't training, he was just having a bit of time off. And the next I see is, is a few interviews being done by Dom and a few Instagrams posted by Kel. Uh, that is the back down there, which, which is fair enough by me. We, I always said we'll never fall out, we'll shake hands and leave it. Yeah, but like I said, nobody. Well, yeah, yeah, it is on my part, but it's just I don't know. I just I, as far as I know, he hasn't told me anything, so I don't know. I'm learning as much as everybody else. Yeah. through Instagram and I'm sorry to social media. Uh, I don't know what now, but I do know that uh, you're a fair bloke and it's nice to for people to show a bit of class on it. Yeah, well, like I say, I've, I've spo I spoke to him last I week. Can tell you that, mm -hmm. But I spoke to him last week and we're fine and uh, speaking to me about Reggie and, and my nana and things like that. So so we're, we're pals still and everything's fine. It's just he, he hasn't officially come out. But I don't think even himself has officially come out and said anything yet. But he has, he has been, I have mean, seen the videos in training right down at Ingalls. But listen, good luck to him, fair enough, fair enough to Kel. We'll always be alright. Uh, but like I said, I've, I've never, we, we, 
we hadn't officially parted ways in such because we hadn't had a chat or anything yet but obviously you ain't got to be a rocket scientist to realise he's gone back down here but listen that's fine I'm that busy at the minute like I said I'm not busy at the minute with my me, with me own kids and me, my kids what ready to turn professional and they're the kids what they're, they're the fighters what what I can't wait to work with every morning what I can't wait to like I can't wait to one of my own grown lads like Suf or Conor Daubeny or Sergio people like that what we've got in our gym what have come at our gym never lay some pair of gloves until they come to our gym when they're boxing for amateur titles and professional titles and things like that that's when I know I will have done well as a trainer. Uh, did you see the interview Dominic said where he was saying he knows Kel, no regarding... No, I've not seen it, Pat. I've not, I've not seen anything from us, no. I think it along the lines that he knows what a fight is and what he doesn't mean. He did say that um, you're basically a part of the technical guy and all that. And all right, then, I well, had the impression you were trying to say he knows yeah. about weight loss and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I, if you look at me, Paul, I know about weight loss. <laughs> right? Listen, I'm not gonna I haven't seen it so I can't comment and I'm not gonna sit here and say you have a good part and say anything, but you know what Russ like, you know when you've been in the sport twenty three years like me, right? And I ain't just been in the sport as a pad man, I ain't just been in the sport of this and that. I've been, I've been fighting. Yeah, but I was also a fighter for 23 years. No, for, I've retired four years ago for 20 years. So I know about fighting, I know about boxing, I know how to run a training camp, I know what a fighter feels like, I know I know how to hold pads because I've boxed. Right, listen, I know exactly. I'm not going to sit here and try, and try and justify myself to anybody or what anybody thinks about me. With Pardon me, all that. I know how to fight, I know how to train fighters, and I know how to be a good trainer. I'm yeah. nowhere near there yet. I'm, I'm new at this game. I'm not, not new at this game. I'm, I'm, I'm new on this side of boxing. But I've been training fighters down at Glynn's since I was 15 years old, right? I've been working camps with Glenn since I was 15 years old. I know what I'm doing, I don't have to justify myself to nobody. And I'm happy, Dennis is happy, my fighters is happy, and that's that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming at. Do you think that uh, the, the perception has been that you haven't been strong enough to keep him at his weight and all that? That's the, the yarn that's been spun in it. No, not at all, not at all because he weighed because his last camp uh, was one of the best shapes he's ever been is. Now if you hadn't if Zarafa were no mug, he just stopped Jeff home two or three weeks ago. So uh, so if Kel hadn't have been in as good a shape. We're an artifact of what people made out. Okay, well, and listen, if it had been a Kel what box cost Zarafa. If it'd have been if it'd have been the same shape as when he box cost and Jones or people like that, right? You never know how that fight might have ended up. But he's got a massive heart, right? I don't like when people see like when people say about him quitting against Elvis Spence, he ain't got no quitting him. I'll tell you now, I've never seen anybody train as hard in my entire life, right? I've never seen anybody train like a demon and want it as much in my entire life. So he's not, but what I'm saying is the reason he was the reason he finished the fight and he had a bad ninth and I think he had a bad tenth and he had a good eleventh, right? If he hadn't been in as good shape as he had been, and he hadn't done his weight as good, and he hadn't have had as good a camp, he would maybe not have finished that fight the way he finished it. Right? So there was nothing wrong with the camp, right? And listen, at the end of the day, it's all right saying strong enough. Kel people blow up between fights all the time, right? It's not it's nobody no I don't think there's nobody in the world saying, oh, Fuki can't keep his weight down in between fights, right? Because he's blown up in between fights loads of times. I blow up in between Ricky Atten, all these people, it's just a bit of an old school mentality. Yeah. Even though Kel's only 33, he's an old school fighter. I'm an old school fighter. You Ricky Atten's an old school fighter. The people like Tommy Franks and Keenan Wainwrights and Sufi Ahmeds and people like that, right? They're new school fighters. They don't blow up between fights. They stay down because there's more professionalism about boxing these days. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day, whoever, you, whoever, whoever a trainer is, mm. whoever a fighter is, you can't physically keep food out of someone's mouth. You can't physically get in there and punch for them. I will still stand by it. I fought Kel box well. I fought in spells. He boxed really well. In spells in him box great. But everybody were expecting. Uh, Expecting, I don't know what you were expecting. So after to be a walkover, he'd, he'd been stopped once in his entire career, and that was by uh, Peter Quillen at middleweight. Right? Yeah. We we're never going to be a walkover. It was always a tough fight, and I thought Kel did well to deal with it. And like I said, he, um, he didn't know hard feelings, right? I just, I just genuinely not spoke to him about it yet. Would be nice to get a call on him. Well, like I said, I spoke to him about other things, and we'll still be all right. Uh, and like I said, I'm that busy. 
it don't matter to me. But for as far as far as listen, I'm learning in this game, right? You start, you're too nice, and you just help people out all the time. You just don't say much, right? People think you can walk all you. As for people thinking I'm a pad man, as for people saying I'm not strong enough to do this. To be honest, Russ, I don't care, mate. I only care about the people that I respect, and I only care about the people that care about me. Simple as that. Ah, oh, cheers, pal. Thank you, mate. Listen, I'm glad to have bumped into you today. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you're in good spirits. I am, pal. Always. Always. Story along the way to yeah, the exactly. And I learned, listen, boxing, working with Kel, I, I, I will always be grateful. I told him that last week. I will always, I will always, oh yeah, top class. Great kid as well. Great kid in me, pal. Right, I'll always be grateful. I loved it. It gave me a bit of a taste of the thing, a taste of uh, of what it takes and what it's like. And then when I'm up there with one of my kids, I'll, I'll have been there before. Yeah. Oh, awesome. All the best, John. Cheers, Pat. See you and your family. Good luck with you. Thanks. Thanks very much.